Hello everyone, Mike, AC9MN here, with a quick video on how to repair a Davis Vantage View integrated sensor suite. When I had moved, my wind direction sensor, wind vane, had gotten broken, and the shaft is bent. If I turn this around, you can see there's a little bit of a wobble in there, in and out like this, it's because the shaft is bent. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to replace the sensor and replace the wind vane. Now, all the Davis Vantage Views and most of their products are, all their sensors that are inside the units are modular, which means it makes it real easy to replace. Um, when you do call Davis, they're going to ask you for the manufacturer's code, and it's actually the code that's right there in the bottom corner of the screen, and right underneath the uh, mount for the mast. So you'll need that number when you reference your uh, part number, or when you reference a uh, replacement part. For me, all I told them I needed was a, uh, I needed a wind vane and a wind direction sensor for Davis Vantage View. Gave them my, uh, gave them my uh, manufacturer ID code, and he sent me back a quote. It was 20 for the module and 15 for the vane. Prices are reasonable. However, when you do call Davis to look for repair parts, they do not accept any Discover cards. They only accept Visa and MasterCard. So if you have a Discover, um, you can use like a prepaid Visa to, uh, to uh, pay them to uh, ship you the parts. So, to start this project, we're going to have to remove the wind vane, and we're going to have to remove the four screws that hold the unit together or hold the cover on the unit. Um, you do not need to remove the anemometer cups because this sensor here is actually screwed into the top of this right here. And you don't need to remove this because this is going to be attached to the bottom. So tools for this project, you're going to need your um, Allen key that came with the Davis. Um, yeah, I've got a handy little screwdriver bit for that. And you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver to take the screws out. So first we're going to start by removing the wind vane. There's the Allen wrench on the side of the wind vane. Let's get open that up and pull the wind vane off. Or what's left of the wind vane. Like I said, when I moved it fell and it broke. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the four screws that hold the cover together. And sometimes these can be a little bit tricky and they'll like to, uh, like to hold on to the top of the unit still. And of course right now this thing's going crazy because I'm shaking it around and it says it's raining cats and dogs outside. Obviously it isn't because it's cloudy and humid here right now. And the uh, it's only saying that because I'm shaking the unit around. This right now is the only Davis I have. Um, I do have two consoles for it. And uh, one of the two consoles is actually connected to the internet with a uh, Davis Weatherlink IP device. And in a future video, I will uh, do a short video on how I connected it to the internet for uh, Citizen Weather Observation Program and uh, the uh, Weather Underground. Tangled up my mic cords here. So here we have the covers removed from the device. Um, like I said, the anemometer doesn't need to come off because it's attached to the top of the unit. And inside the top cover, you can see the uh, anemometer sensor. And once again, it's just held in there by two screws. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn this over and let the two screws that are still stuck in there fall out. So now I got all four screws off to the side that we're holding the unit together. Now inside the unit you're going to see the radio, the solar panel, the, this is the uh, circuit board for the unit, and this underneath here actually has the sensor for the uh, wind direction. Uh, this is the battery pack, this is the tipper spoon, and this the top of this sensor is the uh, wind speed and the bottom of it on this side is actually the thermometer. 
Now, when you rip these things apart, it's not a bad idea to clean them. Um, you should clean the tipper spoon um, because any if you get a buildup of dirt in there, it can actually weigh the spoon down and it'll stop functioning. And you should clean the uh, any bugs or debris out of the uh, the uh, sensor that's inside uh, this area here. Um, to get to that, you just take out these two long screws, and uh, these five uh, these five devices here will pop off, and then you can get to the sensor underneath. So to remove this right here, there's four screws that hold it together. Um, you got one on the inside and you got one on the outside. We're going to remove the two on the outside. The ones on the inside only take the top off of this. Um, we want to remove the whole assembly to get to what's underneath. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop out these two screws here. And now we've loosened up this piece here, and there's a clip off to the side here that holds the ribbon cable in. You can take and pull that clip back and lift the ribbon cable out. Then you can take this whole device here and slide it off to the side. Now underneath, you'll see the circuit board for the wind direction. Now with that lifted off to the side, we can get to the wind direction sensor. Now the wind direction sensor has two screws that hold that in place. You just have to take those two screws out. then the wind, the wind direction sensor will pop right out. Now as you can see, the wind direction sensor has got two screws and two notches cut into it. And that's just to keep it from spinning inside here. Because inside here, there's actually two notches and two screws where, it's, where it rests in the cradle. So I got the new sensor here. Um, does not matter how you mount this thing. Only matters how you put the wind vane on. And I'll be getting to that shortly because this is the second video I shot where <laughs> I actually messed up how I put the wind vane on so I had to reshoot the video. So again, make sure to grab the right screwdriver. I'm going to put the two screws back into the wind direction, or back into the sensor. So now we got the two screws are mounted back into the sensor, and as you can see, it's just going to fly. It's going to kind of float there because of the weight there, or the uh, brass ingot that's inside there to keep it weighted down. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move the suite back up into the or the uh, radio assembly back up into the position, and put the two screws back that hold that in. As I said before, with the Davis, they're, they're a nice system. They may be a little bit pricey in the long run, but uh, they last you a long time. And like I said, if something breaks on them, they're easy to repair, easy to replace. Um, all the parts on them are modular. Um, so instead of replacing an entire, uh, entire instrument cluster, you're just replacing the part that broke. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to clip the ribbon cable back into place here. Now that we got that back in, so I'll just push the ribbon cable down into this little clip here. To get it out, you just pull the back, probably the back a, li back a little bit, and the cable will slide over the clip. Now, I'm going to take our cover, which I have sitting on my floor, and put the cover back on. You want to make sure that the antenna lines up with the antenna on the tower, or on the cover. Put it back together, then we're going to flip it and put the four screws back in on the bottom. And 
And I'm missing one. There it is. Hiding under the screwdriver. You do want to make sure that these are on nice and tight so that you don't get any uh, excess water or anything up under the covers. And don't put them on so tight that you actually crack the cover because that has happened and will happen. The ones in the closest to the uh, wind direction sensor are kind of long and take quite a bit to bite. So. Alrighty. Make sure we get that one. Yep. So now we got all four of the sensors are back together again. Or all four of the bolts are in the cover. Now, when you put the wind vane back on here, if you've ever put a Davis together before, and this is the first mistake I made, is I line this notch up here with the set screw that's on the vane. The way you put this together is this notch here goes away from this set screw. So this actually gets put on like this. And you'll know if it's in there correctly because you'll actually see the shaft through the end of the wind vane. And that was the first mistake I made when I put the wind vane on backwards. Now, for testing purposes, if you want, let me move my coffee mug out of the way here. You can look at your console, point the wind direction, the wind vane to the south or towards the solar panel, and it should say south. So again, the vane's pointed towards the solar panel and south on the display. Always a good idea to test before you actually take things apart or take things uh, and put them back up and find out they're pointing in the wrong direction. As I said before, and I'll do this quick just to show you guys, to get to the uh, the sensor underneath here, you take out these two screws on the top of the on the uh, top of the uh, radiation housing. That's what this is called. And you can take all five of these and lift them up and off. And inside here, you'll actually see the sensor for the thermometer. And every once in a while, you want to uh, just take a soft bristle brush and uh, knock the bugs and everything in uh, cobwebs, any spiders or anything else out of this area. Because that could impede the sensor. And to put it back together, you just set it back on here and tighten it back down again. Like I said, it's all part of a uh, cleaning. If you're, uh, if you need to pull the unit down for any reason, um, to replace a battery or anything else, um, the uh, it's always a good idea to clean it before you put it back up. Uh, you also want to make sure you don't have any debris or anything in the uh, ring collection cup. And uh, if you need to, you can always pull the, the leaf guard out or the leaf clip. So. That's pretty much it. Now the uh, Davis has been repaired and ready to be put back up on the roof. Um, it's going to be a while before I get to that part because of the fact that i got to get my ladder and everything else out and get up on the roof. So, that concludes that. And now we've got a uh, fully functioning Davis again. No bent shafts and the wind direction sensors back on, back in place. So, that should conclude that. Uh, soon I'll do a video on how I uh, connected the uh, Davis to the internet how what I did to uh, what I did for that for Citizen Weather Observer program and uh, Weather Link as well as Weather Underground. Seven three for now, AC nine MN.